on today's podcast, we wanted to bring yet another message of hope from us to you. To do that, we welcome Reverend Ruth Popkin, class of 2009. Ruth currently serves as the pastor of St. Luke United Lutheran Church in Michigan City, Indiana, which is just right down the road from Valpo. Welcome, Ruth. Hi, everyone. This is Pastor Ruth Popkin from St. Luke United Lutheran Church in Michigan City, a 2019 graduate of Valparaiso University. I'm coming to you today to talk a little bit about the theological ideas of faith, hope, and love, or what I call the other trinity, and what do we really need right now. So today I want to talk uh, start by talking a little bit about faith. What is faith? You know, we talk about faith a lot in, world, in our lives. Oh, I have faith in this. You need to have faith that things will turn out all right. But do we really know what faith is? And so I went back to uh, actually my old confirmation thinking and my old confirmation memory work. And the thing that we were taught was that faith trusts the promises of God. Hmm. Faith trusts the promises of God. We trust that what God says he's going to do. So then, thinking further about that, I went to look at Hebrews 11, verse 1. And basically what it boils down to is faith is being sure and certain of what we cannot see. Well, what does that mean? It's a very Lutheran question. Being sure and certain of what we cannot see. Well, we, we really can't see God. We can see God's actions, but we really can't see God. But we are certain that God is going to do what God says God's going to do. It's, again, going back to that trusting of the promise. And so we continue with this idea of faith and looking at the ELCA's website, it says that faith is a relationship where God's promise of steadfast love and mercy in Jesus opens us to a life of bold trust in God and joyful, generous life to everyone we know and meet in daily life. It is a daring confidence in God's grace. And I think that really gets at the, the promises of God. So maybe if we combine it all together is faith trusts in God's grace. So what do you think faith is? Take a few moments and think about it. What of these ideas have really struck you and have really created a, a space in your mind for what it truly means to have faith? So the second member of this other Holy Trinity is hope. We've talked about faith, now we talk about hope. And I started to think, well, hope, it's hoping that things come out the best, but definitions generally don't work the best with the word in them. So again, I asked the question, what is hope? And it's a state of anticipation. Now, there's two different types of hope talked about, especially in the Old Testament. Uh, in the Hebrew, there's the yakal, which is a Hebrew word which means to wait for. And one of the instances in which this waiting is talked about is with Noah. And Noah yakaled, or he waited, for the floodwaters to recede. So it's this being patient and waiting. But the other type of hope was the kava. And what the kava is, it's not just the waiting for something. It's waiting in the tension. It's waiting when you watch that rubber band get pulled really far apart and you keep pulling and pulling and pulling until you figure out when it's going to snap. 
and maybe pulling back just a little bit at that breaking point and sitting in that tension. So we talk about this waiting and feeling of tension while waiting something. So an example of that is in Isaiah. And it talks about how uh, Isaiah kavod for the Lord to arrive. He waited, but he waited in the tension of what was going on around him. And he waited in the tension of the Babylonian captivity. There's not much more tension than in that time. This, has God forsaken us? Has God forgotten us? No, we're going to kavod. We're going to wait in anticipation and wait uh, in hope that the Lord will arrive. And so we often think that hope is seeing how circumstances could work out for the best. And that's more optimism. Biblical hope is not so much centered on circumstances, because often there are no circumstances that can work out for the best. It's like trying to choose the best of the worst options. But biblical hope says it's more about looking at God's past faithfulness and steadying stock for the future on that past faithfulness, which then it goes directly back into faith. Hope is saying, I'm going to wait even though things don't look like they can work out. I'm going to wait with anticipation and trust that God is going to act as he has in the past because I have faith, I have trust that God is gracious and grace-filled. And if we want to continue a little bit further on this idea of hope, in the New Testament, there is a Greek word, elps, and it is a living hope. This is the word that Paul uses when he's talking about hope. It's this hope that God will liberate the world and all of creation from sin and death. And it kind of gets that kava idea in there too, because you're waiting in the already, but the not yet. You're waiting in that tension of we've seen God do things in the past, and we know that God is grace-filled, but we have to wait for the future. And so what does this biblical hope all boil down to? Thinking about all these concepts, biblical hope, it's about choosing to wait for God, who will bring about a future free from evil. It's a choice. It is a choice to trust and to have a daring confidence in God's grace, even when things don't look like they're going to work out. And if we have any question about whether or not our hope is well-placed or whether or not our hope uh, should be in something else, ask yourself this question. If God can resurrect a condemned, crucified man, what else can God do? So take a few moments and think about this idea of hope. What does this idea of hope mean to you? What has really struck you in talking about this hope? And so now we arrive at the last of the uh, members of this other trinity. And it's the one that people tend to spend the most time looking at, and that's love. We think faith, hope, love. Ah, love. It's that famous passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, all about love. So what is love? How would you describe love? 
And oftentimes we think love is, you know, what you see on Valentine's Day. It, it's that eros love, that romantic love. But that's not really what the Bible is getting at when it talks about love. It's talking slightly about eros. Um, you think Song of Songs and uh, some of the more uh, pieces in that direction with poetry. But then you also think about love in the philia sense, you know, friendship, family love, caring about your neighbor because they are connected with you. But more times than not, when the Bible talks about love, it's really talking about agape, that is sacrificial, unconditional love, true unconditional love. And so this agape that uh, is being talked about in the Bible, it's an action rather than a feeling. It is to seek the well-being of someone rather than yourself. It is self-sacrificial. But it's also seeking another's well-being without expecting anything in return. So you think about <clears throat> how Jesus says, to the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, you should hold these banquets, but you should invite those who can't repay you to come to them. So it's not about you gaining honor because you have held this grand banquet and then your friend has to sacrifice some of their honor to you by holding one in return to show how great you are. No, it's a love that says, I'm not going to get anything from this, but I'm going to do it because it is the right thing to do and because God loves me so much and has shown me that, that I am going to share that love beyond myself. And this love further gets going when, it, when you consider the fact that biblical love is about how well you treat your enemy or the one you really can't stand in return. It's about thinking about the person or the action that would just drive you up a wall more than you can imagine, and yet choosing to do right by the person who is doing that action. So what do you think? How do you see this agape love? in your life? How do you see it in your world? Take a few moments and think about that. So now that you've had some time to think about faith, hope, love, as Paul say, these three, how would you, how have you boiled them down during those brief breaks to think about it? I want to share with you how I broke them down for myself. And that is, so faith is a confidence that God wants what is good for the world. Hope is seeing how God has made shown that God wants good for the world in the past and trusting that God wants to continue to bring good into the world in the future, even if we can't see it yet. And love is acting out the good that you want to see in the world. What it really all boils down to is you can't have faith or love without hope. You can't have uh, love without faith and hope, and you can't have faith without hope and love. They are three interconnected yet separate ideas. And thinking about all of this, thinking about faith as a confidence that God wants what's good for the world, hope is seeing how God has made shown that he wants good in the world in the past, and trusting that God wants to continue to bring that good into the world in the future, even if we can't see it yet, and that love is acting out the good you want to see in the world. How does this all matter where we're sitting right now? I mean, we're sitting at home, most of us. Yes, there are, there are many of us who are essential workers, but for many of us, what we've been told is the best 
thing you can do right now is to stay home. So how do we act out this faith, hope, and love sitting at home? Well, think about it. <clears throat> faith in this whole time of situation is trusting that this whole coronavirus, this whole COVID-19, is not God punishing humanity for something we did wrong. God doesn't cause bad things to happen. Bad things happen because God gives us free will. And because we, unlike God, are not perfect. Therefore, we make mistakes. And we don't always make the best choices. So bad things happen. But faith tells us that God can make good things happen out of bad situations because God wants what's good for the world. Therefore, we must have faith that God will help us to see the good in the midst of the bad. So what are some examples of seeing that good among the bad? Where have you seen that in your life? And how can you trust that God is causing that good to be there? And then if we consider hope, we're looking at past events like this. When has this happened before? And the first thing that at least pops into my mind is the pandemic of 1918. They had less knowledge than we do and didn't really understand why certain things are happening. And yet God led them through that time. God led them to the point where the country could recover because we weren't all raised in this fear of the 1918 flu. So God stood by those people during that time. And so having hope during this time is perhaps considering the fact that, yes, bad things have happened in the past, but God caused the good to come out. And God will continue to do that into the future. And so with love, now that we've seen that God wants good and will help us to see the good among the bad, how can we act upon the need for goodness in the world? You know, the ELCA has a motto. It's God's work, but our hands. So how can we be God's hands? How can we help God to be the goodness in the world? How are we living out our lives of service? And so during this time in which we have to sit and to think or maybe to do some work, I want you to consider how you can live out faith, hope, and love. How can you trust God's gracefulness? How can you trust that what God's past gracefulness will continue into the future? And then how can you share God's gracefulness with the world? I appreciate you joining me today for this Bible study, and I look forward to hearing your answers and hearing how you respond to the question of how you live out faith, hope, and love during this time. Many blessings. Thank you, Pastor Ruth, for your words of hope in these unsettling times. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Torchbearers, the Valpo Alumni Podcast. We continue to keep you all in our thoughts, prayers, and hearts. And remember, go Valpo!